the other people should gather together for publicity for the forthcoming crusade. Praise the Lord. Do you get me right? And I believe as you obey, the blessings of obedience will follow you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up together to pray. I want you to talk to God that God will bless you. You have come to the house of God. The Lord will speak to your heart. That there shall be no idol in your heart. You will serve God sincerely and plainly. You will serve God without pretense. Without hypocrisy. Without deception. You will serve the Lord heartily. And the love of God will be paramount in your heart. That all the grace we need to be able to do the will of God at all times, God will grant it unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to hear a better amen. amen. I want to hear a stronger amen. amen. Our Father and our great God in heaven, we want to thank you this great morning. We bless and magnify your great name. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to gather together in your house and in your presence. Father, this day, we are asking and pleading that today, today, you will bless us. You will not allow us to go back home the same way we came. Lord, our understanding will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Our knowledge of God will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Our maturity will increase as well in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Better, amen, before you sit down. Amen. We are considering the topic, the sermon today, titled, The Great Cost and Comprehension of Unequal Yoke. The great cost and comprehension of unequal joke. Now, when you look at the word, the great cost, it has to do with the lost. What unequal joke will take out from you? What unequal joke will steal from you? What unequal joke will cost you? The damage it will cost you. The punishment you will face. When you at, at any time go into an equal joke with a person that is not godly. Now if you look at the word comprehension. Another word for comprehension is understanding. Interpretation. Or knowledge. Now, when you said comprehension or the great cost and understanding, when you understand something, it will help you either to go into it if it is good or to avoid it if it is bad. But when you remain ignorant of that thing and you are ignorant of that thing, you know they used to say. If 
we don't believe that. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has life with darkness? God see all the believers as those in the light and not believers those walking in darkness. So we are not supposed to be joked together. Can you put darkness and light together? Answer me now. Okay, look at verse 15. And what concord that's agreement has Christ with Belia? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. And walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. So God sees his children different and separated from the people that are not children of God. God is your father. Why Satan is the father of the sinners? That's why they can always obey him. They put someone against God. But all the born against children of God are those who are supposed to be submissive to God. But look at verse 17. He said, We have all come out from among them. Don't be like them. Don't go their way. Don't join them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not your clean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my son and daughters. Who is talking here? Who is talking here? Say the Lord Almighty. This is not a talk of man. This is not a talk of people like. Is the word of God that the sinners and the believers should not be joined together. What we mean by unequal joke is like joking two animals. Two animals that is not of the same height. Not of the same You bring an elephant, you're supposed to bring another elephant because elephant is height. Am I right? Yeah. Then you joke two of them together. In those days, if you in some place, if you go to some countries, they see use animal as their means of uh, transportation, even till tomorrow. So, but those animals might be of the same size. Then they put rope on two of them and they construct some kind of uh, a cat that can carry something now the person will use those animals to carry their goods to wherever they want to go to now think about it if you bring an elephant and then you bring rats and then you yoke two of them together can it work and sammy can it work number one they are not of the same height they are not of the same size and i think also is it let me also put it this way i said they are not of the same character in like going to bring what they call lizard or rabbit let me put it or call a rat in your house you know some of us you see rat moving up and down then you now go and bring this other thing that used to eat rat what's the name eh bushy cat now and then you say two of you should stay in the same place. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Or you bring a lion, a lion, and then go together to stay with lion. What do you think will happen? The lion will do what? Will devour the goats. So the character are not the same. The size are not the same and the height are not the same so if you now join with anybody who does not have the same nature with god and you child of god you're a sinner you're born again 
you have seen someone again you are going to heaven the other one is going to hell you pray in the morning the other one does not want to pray in the morning and when you read your bible the other person is doing something else and you say that's the man i want to marry that's the person i'm going to do the same uh, business with when you are sincere that man is not sincere he can travel out of bonnie and go and use that money you contributed together for business and go and build a house in the village he will come and tell you a lie am i right that armed robbers did what arrested him and then beat him and collected the money from uh, from him but can you do as a believer you can't do that because the character of the man and the nature of the man is not the same with your belief so that's why two of you can never be joked together either in marriage or in business so when we talk about unequal joke we're talking about not joking animals not of the same height not of the same sight and not of the same eh, character praise the lord so our messiah did not consider this look at second chronicle chapter 25 i read verse 1 then 5 to 10 and see what happened here that he did by going to a kind of unequal joke with a people he's not supposed to go into and god was not happy in second chronicles chapter 25 second chronicles chapter 25 i read from verse 5 second chronicles chapter 25 number one i read verse number one then five to ten and thirteen are you there and messiah was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 29 years in jerusalem and his mother's name what you see there was jehoadan of jerusalem look at verse 5 moreover and messiah gathered judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds according to the houses of their fathers throughout all judah and benjamin and he numbered them from 20 years old and above and found them 300,000 choice men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield in verse 6 look at what happened here he hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of israel for an hundred word talents of silver verse 7 but there came a man of god to him saying o king let not the army of israel go with thee for the lord is not with eh, israel god has rejected them because of what they did and their sin he said don't go with them if you go with them to this battle you'll be a loser and he said to wit with all the children of ephraim look at verse 8 but if thou will go do it be strong for the battle god shall make thee what is it there fall before the enemy for god has, has power to help and to do what to cast down look at verse 9 now and the Messiah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Verse 10. Then a Messiah separated them to wit the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again wherefore their anger because they were asked to go back was greatly kindled against judah and they returned home in greater anger in verse 13 but the soldiers of the army which amasiah sent back that they should not go with his battle or with him to battle fell upon the cities of judah from samaria even unto where Betaron and smote three thousand of them and took much eh? spoil you can see the losses here number one the silver he paid to those army 
he lose them and again the people when he asked them to go back and the people were so angry so offended and they were not happy so they decided to retaliate and destroy thousands of people and that is a cause of what compromise yes Amasaya was able to retrace his step back what i intended doing was against god god was not happy with me i'm not supposed to but he did it ignorantly even though he obeyed god but the cost was still there are you done? he lost a lot of things army people uh, some people died as a result of that uh, uh, unequal joke so the lord wants believers not to be unequally joke with unbelievers in anything marriage business fellowship friendship worship you know you see people wandering to one place from one place to the other they invited me there they invited me there a child of god does not go to every place because there's a kind of worship or a place where they worship god that is not in order with the scriptures and you cannot go there and sit down there to worship a kind of business some people do you cannot as a believer join together with a sinner to do a dubious kind of business you don't do that you cannot as a believer marry to an unbeliever even if the richest man in nigeria you can't do that and you cannot be a friend to a dubious boy or girl as a friend and then you always go together they say show me your friend and i will do what i will tell you who you are so there are things we don't do as believers in the name of whatsoever that i like the man i like the no it is not that you look at the word of god two can never work together it said they be agreed so it requires the children to do that which is right god wants us to do that and messiah did what was right in the sight of the lord but not with a private heart he was he was antiquous in his approach to war and he wanted to ensure victory was definite therefore he hired additional soldiers from the northern kingdom of israel but a man of god that we read a courageously warned him o king let not the army of israel go with thee for the lord is not with israel so we mean that when we go into an equal joke with anybody god detach himself from us god will draw himself from us anything can happen to us when you go into compromise on equal joke with anybody no matter the purpose or the motive god does not look at only what we do god also look at the motive that is behind what you are doing somebody can be giving some money uh, money to somebody but with a wrong motive somebody can be doing good to somebody but with an inferior motive so god look at what you do he also look at the motive in which you do that uh, that thing so sometimes doing the will of god may attract the anger of people who are not totally submissive to him we have seen from where we read that when i'm assigned to the people to go back the people were not happy am i right but then it is good to obey god than to obey man now if Amasai did not obey God that would have been the worst for him am I right am I right he wouldn't say okay I cannot say well because of what I'm going to lose because of the cause and by the what I'm going to the, uh, the 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 problem I'm going to have let me just keep this up because even though it's against the will of God you obey God that tells us that whenever God says something to us we need to obey that thing whether man is happy or not God is the one that is greater than the man praise the lord so we need to understand unequal joke properly and how to apply to children of god because the lord evaluates us according to state of our hearts now for example now it's like you're having a bad friend and that friend you know this person is not helping you and you know that uh, the word of god is against that friend or let's say a business uh, partner you have entered into a business partner with that partnership with that man and the lord is saying this man is not a good man this person is not a good person separate from this man and you are struggling should i obey should i not obey and then you say okay if i if i separate from this man this man will not be happy with me it's good that you obey god first 
let that man be angry with you am i right now for example now if a man is not happy with you and god is happy with you which one is better answer me now if you try to please man and you displease god which one is better it's good to please god and do what and to displease man that is what we must know i want us to look at the message under three subheadings number one the irretrievable loss of partnership with the ungodly irretrievable loss what does that mean the loss that a messiah experienced was irretrievable what he, he spent to hire those army he could not retrieve them that means that if you go to an equally joke the kind of losses you are going to gather you cannot retrieve them he lost the talents the people that died he could not retrieve them that tells us how dangerous it is to go into what unequal joke the irretrievable loss of partnership with the ungodly look at the bible in second chronicle where we read before look at the lost there and he could not retrieve them he could not retrieve them second chronicle chapter 25 i read from verse 5 second chronicle chapter 5 reading from verse 5 church are you there i read from verse 5 moreover and as I gathered together and made them captains, come down to verse 6. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of their silver. Look at what he spent there. Was he able to retrieve them? Answer me now. Did he retrieve them? He lost that amount of money. In verse 13. But the soldiers of the army, which Amasiah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto the Bethlehem, and smote three thousand of them, and took much eh, spoil. Was he able to retrieve all those things? He lost all of them. That's the danger of unequal yoke look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 that your unequal yoke goes beyond go beyond uh, just uh, worship and then goes beyond some people say well i'm not uh, into that and as i went into unequal joke ignorantly but quickly made a man when a man of god warned him our victory success and progress and fruitfulness should not be obtained on the basis of unequal joke some people know they want to do the will of god but they are afraid of those who will get angry as a result god will also get angry if he fail to do his will and it's a greater anger anyone or everyone should avoid even though a messiah eventually obeyed that god obeyed the lord to cancel partnership with the ungodly he suffered the consequence of unequal joke as the soldiers were destroyed look at unequal joke is not limited to marriage alone some people say i married according to the will of god what about your business some people send money to some people look up here please everybody church look up here there are some people that preach in the television have you seen them before answer me now be sincere have you seen some people preach on television before do you know whether they are in first, into false or not do you know it some of them marry more than one wife some of them marry a lot of wives some of them are into i mean uh, false doctrine and at the end of their preaching they say you send money to support the the ministry have you had people say something like that before then you now sit down and then you send your money if you do that god look at you as an enemy 
If you send money to somebody that you know is not standing for God, that means you are supporting the evil that the person is doing. God will not be happy with you. So it goes beyond marriage. And then it, the people you send money to, giving support or lending your voice to a person who has gone out of the way of, of the word of God, when you support them and then you agree with them, you support them, you back them up, God sees you as an enemy. We must look before we leave, think before we act, and see if our choices or action are in order. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. I read from verse 1 to 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7, from verse 1 to 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7, from verse 1 to 4, I read, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gebusites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Look at verse 2. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no what? Covenant with them. Go into any agreement with them. Not show mercy unto them. Look at verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. With them. Thy daughter, thou shalt not do what? Give unto his son. Look up here. There are some parents because of the love of money. And they know by God's grace their children, their daughter, their son have the fear of God. They have given their life to Christ. Just because they know someone somewhere and the man is a big man and he comes to marry their daughter, comes to marry their son, some parents will not consider the spiritual aspect of it. All they see is the money. That if this man will come into our family, he will elevate all our suffering. He will bring us up. Our children will now become better. They will go to school. The money blindfold their eyes. And they can give their daughter or their son to anybody to marry without looking at the spiritual state of, the child, of their children. This is what God is telling us here. That no matter how rich a man may be, no matter how great a man may be, and the man comes to marry your daughter or your son, and you look at the background of this man, the background of this woman, and this person is not a child of God, is not born again, don't just because of money, because of gain. And then you said, you give your daughter and a marriage to that man. If you do that, you are an, an enemy of God. Look at the Bible. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. You don't marry to anybody who is an unbeliever. No matter how educated, or how rich, or how great the person may be. Thy daughters, thou shalt not give unto his son. His son. You know, some people will come and say, well, I, I, I like your daughter. My son is in America. My son is this and that. And then he'll be looking for a good wife. I know your family is a good family. Please help us. Let my son marry your, your daughter. I pray none of us will behave that way in the name of Jesus Christ. If you give your daughter to marry to a sinner, it's like you give your daughter to death. That's the meaning. It's like you, you use your hand to sign your daughter and send your daughter to a fire. That's the meaning. Look at it. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughters shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will do what? Turn away thy son from following me. That thou may serve other, that they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord, not anger of the church, not anger of man, be kindled against you. And do what? and destroy thee how suddenly so god is angry with any man 
any woman, whether as a person or individual or a family that go into unequal joke or partnership with the ungodly people anywhere, everywhere. Look at the case of this man in Second Chronicles chapter 18. See the story of Jehoshaphat. You see, there are a lot of godly people sometimes they act as if they didn't know anything about God. And we must not be like them. That's why we have the Bible. Because we learn from the past. Error of the past. Mistakes of the past. What other people did so we can avoid them. And what they did well so we can emulate them. So when you look at some of the things they do, you discover that we don't need to follow that. Second Chronicles now, chapter 18, I read verse 3, then 28 to 34. Second Chronicles, chapter 18. Church, are you there? I said, are you there? Chapter 18 of Second Chronicles, I read verse 3, then 28 to 34. Verse 3. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, would thou go with me to remove Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art. Look up here, everybody. Is there anyone here that does not know that Ahab was a very wicked man? That's the husband of who? Husband of who? Yes, Abel. And Jehoshaphat, a man of God. Jehoshaphat, a child of God. And this man came to Joshua and said, please, you are king like me. Join me. Let's go to war. And then, on what ground must Joshua, knowing a person like this that God is not happy with, then you join the person. Look at the statement of Joshua. I am as thou art. That statement was very, very wrong. A child of God and a sinner are not the same. How can you say, I am as thou art? That means that we are the same. That means that we have the same belief. That means that we have this, we run the same course. It was not true. Uh, uh, Joseph is not supposed to say that. I am as that. Is that like somebody coming to you and you're a wicked, terrible young man? And you say, Well, we are together. We are together. How can you be together? Can darkness and light go together? Can goat and the sheep go together? Now look at it. He said, I am as thou art. And my people as thy people. And then that is what happened. But see what happened now in verse 28. In verse 28 to 34. Are you there? So the king of Israel and Joshua, the king of Judah, went up to where? To Ramogiliad. And the king of Israel said unto Joshua, What do you see there? I will do what? Disguise myself. And I will go to the battle. But put thou on thy, eh, thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself. And they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots. That they were with, that were with him. Saying, fight ye not with small or great save only with the king of Israel. That's referring to who? To Ahab. Instruction was given that as we are going for this battle, our target is who? Is who? Is Ahab. That's a target. Meanwhile, Ahab himself has disguised himself, meaning that he tried to project who? Joshua. He tried to project Joshua. And himself hide at the corner. But the target of the people is that the person we are looking for, our main target in this battle is who? Is uh, Ahab. But look at the Bible. In verse 31. Are you there? And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Joshua that they said, It is the king of uh, Israel. This is Ahab. Because Ahab had disguised himself and he projected Joshua. That means that Joshua was not looking like uh, Ahab. Ahab was like a different person altogether. 
you can see how dangerous it is on earth now look at this therefore the compass are you there so it is the king of israel therefore the compass about him to do what to fight but joshua the word cried out god had mercy upon him if you are if you are and, uh, into any affinity with the sinner may god have mercy upon you look at this he cried out and the lord helped him and god moved them to depart from him for it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of israel they turned back again from pursuing him and a certain man drew a bow at the venture now let me stop there you can read down to verse 34 on your own but you see that joseph had miraculously escaped what escaped death so unequal joe will have led him to destruction to death he was just by the mercy of god his life was a eh, spirit now if you come down to chapter 19 or so you see what happened there god now sent a messenger look at verse 19 chapter 19 verse 1 and 2 and joshua the king of judah returned to the house in peace to jerusalem and jehu the son of anani the seer went out to meet him and said to him joshua shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the lord many believers are like this they compromise with the ungodly they support those who hate the lord they raise up their hand they heal them and he said and love them that hate the lord therefore his wrath is upon thee from before the the lord god is always angry not happy with those who go into compromise who go into unequal joke may god deliver us in jesus name Amen. i say may god deliver us in jesus name Amen. god does not take that from anybody you can write down second samuel chapter 15 verse 12 second samuel chapter 16 verse 23 and second samuel chapter 17 verse 23 as well you can also write down jonah chapter 1 from verse 1 to 16 we we'll see what upon you know the story of jonah when he was running away from god and a lot of people almost lost their lives because they accepted jonah into their boats there will shall be no jonah in your boat you didn't give me a good amen there yeah. there shall be no jonah in your boat if you allow jonah in your boat your boat will have problem your boat will have problem number two that's point two the irreproachable landmarks of perception by the uncompromising i repeat the irreproachable landmarks of perception by the uncompromising i would like to just break down the word irreproachable it's a simple word it's like saying exemplary because when you break down some word you have a deeper understanding then you can now link the two together to give you accurate understanding of what we are talking about now we have some characters in the bible who are very exemplary their perception of god they know the mind of god and we are going to learn about them the means exemplary it also means model so when we said an irreproachable or exemplary or model beyond reproach perfect and above reproach ideal admirable and then outstanding these people we are having these qualities and look at them and we're going to show them from the bible so the irreproachable or ideal or exemplary landmarks of perception by the uncompromising we have people like daniel in the bible you know a lot of people too look up everybody members of the church you must differentiate between unequally yoke and what is not a unequal a yoke you know daniel in babylon 
was not like the Babylonians. Am I right? You praise the Lord. Somebody can be a Christian in the government. You know, like a believers in the world. Jesus prayed. He said, do that in the world. They are not of the... You know, you cannot say because you are a Christian, you cannot work in your company. Because you are a Christian, you cannot go to school. Because we are Christian, you cannot uh, contract your building out when you see somebody is a professional who is supposed to give you what you are looking for. We use medicine who are sinners to work for us. Eh? Am I right? We go to doctors who are sinners to check our body. Am I right? Am I right? You go to the market. All the people you buy something with, are they all born again people? Christians? I, I, I want you to answer me very well. So, some people have a kind of mentality that is not proper. Now, some people don't know what's called unequally yoke. So, some people think that, okay, if now you go to a particular place or do a particular business or you go to somebody, we have contractors who do the work for the church who are not born again. Am I right? And that because if you don't have somebody of such in your midst, I mean, let's say you let's say you are looking you want to build a house and you don't have a, a competent engineer that can give you what you are looking for now if you go outside and hire their service to come and do the work for you that is not unequal uh, yoke you're only seeking them for their service you pay them that does not mean you are like them or they're like you i don't know whether i understand what i'm saying because if you don't have understanding of this you can have a very wrong notion, a very wrong belief that this is this, that is that. So you must balance the two. Now, Daniel was in Babylon. He was like students in higher institution. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They get scholarship to go to school. Christians have scholarship from government. Sinners also have scholarship from the, the government but what you do in the midst of the people is what makes you a sinner or a believer they were in the same school with other babylonian people but you can see in their life they were very different from others am i right they never compromised themselves and you cannot say because eh, sinners are there bad people are there even even some believers miss the miracle of god believers from today god will change you so people feel that god can use anybody to help you do you know that that's not unequal yoke let's say you travel and you go to a particular place where you don't know anybody and the night covers maybe your, your vehicle had problem and you try to fix the vehicle but there was no way and then the night comes and god can send anybody a good samaritan let somebody meet you on the road middle of the road alone he said please come and spend a night in my not not a not a man and a woman no are you hearing me now are you hearing what i'm saying now not a boy and a girl oh. come and spend a night in my that one is like tempting god you don't do that a man met you come and spend a night it could be a couple a family come and spend a night in my house and you ask the person are you are you born again he said no are you sanctified he said no are you baptized in the holy ghost he said no it's over my dead body i cannot come to your house if you are there alone on the lonely road and armed robbers come and kill you you kill yourself you're a murderer god sent those people to come and help you you cannot say well eh, because you are not born again if i come to your house and sleep i spend a night i'm in trouble now no and god has sent the person to come and help you you say i cannot compromise my i cannot be unequally yoked together with a is that unequally yoke you travel somewhere and then the vehicle spoiled and the only money you have was the one you paid originally before the journey started and then when you discover that there was no way you cannot go anywhere and god just touched the heart of somebody it could be a man or a woman and say where are you going to i said i'm going to somewhere i don't have no i don't have any money and the person dish out maybe twenty thousand and say please take this for your transport you silver my dead body i cannot collect that money 
Because if I do that, that means I've compromised my... Is that compromise? Is that compromise? God can use anybody. The Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness... Uh, God can use any of his creature to help you. You will see that later before we pray. And from now, God will use every of his creature to help you. God will send help from every corner to help you. So when you see something, don't decline. Don't say you are compromising or it's unequal. No, it is not. So you must understand what we mean by unequal joke. Look at Daniel. Daniel was in Babylon. Who on earth can say that Daniel was a compromiser? Was he a compromiser? He was in Babylon. Joseph became a prime minister. Am I right? Am I right? Next to who? Next to Pharaoh. Was he on equal yoke together with Pharaoh? No. God can raise you up to be a minister in Nigeria. Provided you are not doing what they are. Are you hearing me now? Do you like promotion? We work in a company that is owned by a sinner. Am I right? Why do we work there? Go and resign. Because that man is a sinner. You work in the company. You are not there as a sinner. You are not there to whatever because of the man. You are there because of your, your skill and whatever. So look at Daniel chapter 1 in verse 8. So you should be able to differentiate between compromise, unequal joke, and the proper... You see, look at this. Irreproachable landmarks. These people were exemplary. They were in the midst of people that were corrupt. But they distinct themselves, different themselves, separate from others. You will, you will be like this. Our children in school will be like this. We in the compound where we are, we shall be like this. You in your market will be like this. And your place of work as well. Daniel chapter 1 verse 18. Daniel chapter 1 verse 18. Daniel chapter 1. Reading from verse 18. Daniel chapter 1 verse 18. Sorry verse 8. Are you there? Daniel 1 verse 8. But Daniel the word purpose in his heart that he will not do what? defile himself that is what would have made him to have an equal you if he had defiled himself but he was in their midst he was in their midst he has a different mentality different belief different character different comportment different behavior but if there was not a compromiser you'll be like that in the name of jesus christ now look at daniel chapter 2 verse 47 to 49 daniel 2 47 to 49. Daniel 2, 47 to 49. I read. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God, what do you see there? Is a God of what? Gods. And the Lord of uh, kings. And a revealer of what? Secret. Seeing thou couldest do what? Reveal this secret. That was when he interpreted the dream. That no other person could interpret. Look at verse 48. Then the king made Daniel what? A great man. Promotion does not come from man. Promotion comes from God. Anywhere you find yourself in the midst of sinners, if you're not a compromiser, God will promote you right there in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Daniel did not say, Well, I will not take your promotion. Because you are that's uncomfortable. Oh. It is a different thing altogether. This has nothing to do with his faith. Look at it. And then the king made Daniel a great man. God will make you a great man. Amen. Your amen is very, very small. Amen. And God gave him many great... Eh? What do you see there? Give him many great... Eh? Do, you, do you receive the gifts? Answer me now. And made him ruler over the whole eh, province of eh, Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of eh, Babylon. 49. Then Daniel requested of the king and he said what do you see there? His friends Shadrach, Meshach and who again? And Abednego. Over the affairs of the province God will make you a great man. Anywhere you are God will lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ. They occupied everywhere 
But that was not an equal yoke. They, they were doing the right thing at the right time, not compromising their faith, and God honored them. God will honor you. Honor your children. Honor our family in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. And that's what happened. And then you look at the case of David. When the people enemy came to Ziklag and destroyed Ziklag. And then David and his men came back, discovered that their wives were taken out, they were taken captive. All their properties looted. They came back and they cried and they cried and they cried to the point that there was no strength again in them to cry. Other people now stood against David. They picked stone. They wanted to kill him to death. But David went and consulted God and prayed whether he should pursue the enemies. God gave me a go ahead. He said, pursue them. And you are going to recover everything. And then as David was going and going, he met a young man. And that young man was one of the people that came to Ziklag to destroy the place. And that young man was almost at the point of death. He gave him food to eat. He was an Egyptian who came with them. And then he now asked him a question. And the young man was the one that God used to direct David to where the enemies eh, were. Praise the Lord. God will send you a helper. God will send you a helper. So when we are doing and serving God, my brother, don't misunderstand. God can use anybody from anywhere. When he wants to deliver you, God can use anything. Anybody. So don't decline. Don't say, well, I cannot take this one from this man. I cannot do this one. No. If the motive is not wrong and God is the one sending, that is a help from where? From God. You can write down First Samuel chapter 30. That's the story I've just told you now. Verse 8. 11 to 15 and 18 God will send you helpers I say God will send you helpers I say God will send you helpers you know in the case of Paul look at you can write down Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 10 you know some people that did not know God assisted Paul assisted Paul in his journey Sometimes some people, you know, I don't know, we are too righteous, too holy. Even when God wants to help us, we miss the help. We miss the miracle. You can write down Acts chapter 28 verse 1 to 10. You can also write down uh, Acts chapter 5. Please make sure you read it from verse 33 to 35. This is a man that the people, the Pharisees and all the Sadducees, enemies of God's children, when they rose up to oppose them and they wanted to hinder the gospel, this man came rose up among them he was a prominent man respected person and he was the one that stood up to speak on the behalf of the disciple of uh, of jesus christ and their life was spared he was not a child of god he was not born again god will use somebody to defend you anywhere you go and god will use people to speak on your behalf in the name of jesus christ so don't count everything you see as a as bad no it is not Write down 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. 1 Kings chapter 5, from 1 to 10. You can be appointed as a minister. You will be a minister. Look up here. Do you know that politics become a dirty game because of the practice? Politics become a dirty game because, because a Christian cannot go if you can because you can you must compromise to do what they're doing before you can become but there's what we call appointment i hope you are hearing what i'm saying now there's what we call what appointment if you are working and they know that you are an engineer you are not a politician and the government look at your credibility they know your performance they know what you can do government can decide to appoint you a commissioner for works it's not that you go through the process of election or politics or make campaign that's appointment you can be appointed a great man when government know that this person can deliver us this person can be of a help to us this person can do what we are looking for you can be appointed and when you are appointed like that what are you supposed to do <laughs> praise the lord you will accept the appointment because God will make you great in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you can write down all those places I, I mentioned. And then go back home and read. And God will give you better understanding in Jesus' name. 
God will give you better understanding in Jesus' name. Give me a better amen. amen. Another amen. amen. A better amen. amen. Now we go to the last point. The irreversible lashness of promise from the unchangeable. The word irreversible means irrevocable. The promise of God cannot be revoked. When God make a promise, that promise is permanent. Can I hear you shout permanent? permanent? That promise is irrevocable. That promise is constant. That word irreversible means irrevocable. It also means unchangeable. Every promise of God is what? Unchangeable. It also means lasting. That prom every promise of God is a lasting promise. It has no end. Every promise of God also is enduring. Now, when God gave a promise, when God said, I will bless a man, nobody on earth can change that thing. Your enemies cannot change that. Witches and wizards cannot change that. Powers of darkness cannot change that. When God has said, this man is going to be great, this woman is going to be great, this boy is going to be great, let all the demons together team up and gang up. They can't reverse that thing. Everything that God has spoken concerning you, no enemy in your compound or your family can reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. So the irreversible lastness of promise from the unchangeable because God himself is unchangeable and there is nothing on earth that can change his promise to his children or fake it. When God has said, I will heal you, that means God has the power to heal you. When God said, I will save you, when you repent of your sin and confess your sin, God will save you. The Bible said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for... Look at, uh, look at Malachi chapter 3. Let's see the nature of God. So that when God gives us a promise, then we'll be able to believe him. And know that this God that gives me a promise is unchangeable God. In Malachi chapter 3, look at verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 reading from verse 6 Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 Malachi 3 verse 6 church are you there I read for I am the Lord that means when you hear the word I am the Lord that means beside me there is no other other one I'm above all I'm all in all I am that's what God uh, told Moses. When Pharaoh asks you, who sent you? Tell him, I am that I sent you. That means beside me, there's no other one. Nobody can compete with me. I am all and all. So he said, for I am the Lord. What do you see there? I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not what? Can I hear good amen there? On your behalf, God will not change. In your family, God will not change. In every area of your life, God will not change. And the Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus said, the Bible said, I'm the, the same yesterday, today, and Jesus is the same yesterday and for the same yesterday and for I want to tell you today that God will remain the same. On your behalf, God remain the same. In your family, God remain the same. Let me tell you some other thing. A last promise that cannot be reversed. Because the one that made the promise, the promise giver, is unchangeable. Look at Isaiah 14. We want to read some verses there. And I'll go to other places. And finally read the place I want to read before we pray. Now look at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Please, as I'm reading these scriptures, I may not have all the time to explain everything, go into detailed explanation, but I want you to follow me very closely. Then you will understand what is the mind of God concerning you. The mind of God concerning your family. The mind of God concerning your church. And I want to tell you today, after today, your condition shall never be the same. In Isaiah chapter 14, look at verse 1. Isaiah 14 verse 1. I read, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them 
and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and armies, and they shall take them captives, those captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Well, maybe you didn't follow me very well. The table will turn. Amen. I said the table will turn. Amen. Those who delighted in oppressing you before, they shall become on they shall come under you. Amen. That's it. Let me tell you, this church, this group, if you follow what I'm going to read and what I've read so far, I'm seeing increase. Amen. I'm seeing addition. Amen. I'm seeing growth. Amen. In all our locations in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Follow me. Look at verse 24 and 27 verse 24 and 27 are you there and the lord of hosts has sworn saying surely as i have taught so shall it come to pass Amen. and as i propose so shall it stand Amen. in verse 27 for the lord of hosts has proposed and who shall disannul it and his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back when god stretched forth his hand to bless you nobody can turn back his hand and the hand of god is up towards you the hand of god is stretching towards you and nobody can reverse it in the name of jesus christ that's why you must be confident in god that no matter what's happening in nigeria all over the world god will send you help but you must understand that not every miracle that come your way is a bad one not every help that come your way is a bad one so we are talking about unequal yoke we are trying to differentiate so that you will understand which one is unequal yoke and we must a divine miracle from uh, from god and you will begin to have them in the name of jesus christ now look at chapter 47 so it's 45 Isaiah 45 i want to read also from verse 1 to 5 22 and 23 Isaiah 45 from verse 1 to 5 are you there does hear the Lord to his anointed to Cyprus whose right hand I have holding to subdue nation before him and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him in the two leaf gates and the gates shall not be shut I will go before thee Amen. and make the crooked places straight. Amen. I will break in pieces the gates of brass Amen. and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Amen. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness Amen. and hidden riches of secret places. Amen. And that thou mayest know that I, the Lord which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant, sake, the Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I guided thee, though thou hast not known me. Look at verse 22 and 23. Are you there? 22 and 23, I read. Look unto me. Praise the Lord. Look unto me in a condition like this. Look at the whole world today. Look at hardship. Look at the difficulties. Look at all the trouble here and there. God is saying, look away from the trouble. Look unto me. Look unto me and be ye safe all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Verse 23. I have sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that thou that unto me every knee shall do what shall bow every tongue shall do what shall swear god will bring all your enemies under your feet they will come and bow before us look at psalm uh, Isaiah 61 verse 5 and 6 Isaiah 61 verse 5 and 6 Isaiah 61 verse 5 and 6 are you there 5 and 6 and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks people you don't know god will use them i say god will use them 
Strangers shall do what? Stand and do what? Feed your flocks. God will send people to help your children. Help your wife. Help your husband. And the sons of the alien shall be your plum men and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. This is what people, Christians, don't know. God will help us to make. Let me tell you this. Look up, everybody. The riches of the Gentiles shall become our portion. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying now? Look up here, everybody. If you see a big man, very great man, he has houses, he has piece of cars, he has that one, he has that one. But he's a terrible sinner. If God convert that person and that person is born again, all his properties also will be converted to who? To God. I want to tell you that God will help you. You will eat the riches of the Gentiles. Amen. In Bonny Land here, yeah, you will enjoy God. Amen. Because all the properties that we have all over the world belong to our, our God. Nobody can align you. you didn't hear, I didn't hear that even very well. Amen. Nobody can put you away from the riches of your Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at the Bible. And that's the word of God here. Yeah. He said, are you there with me? Are you there with me? Where did I stop now if you are with me? Eh? You say what? Thank you very much. Verse. Verse. Thank you. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. And shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourself Amen. in their glory what they proud themselves of we mean that that thing will be converted to usefulness in the house of god that we shall boast ourselves in their glory Amen. their riches shall become our portion if that's why we need to go to preach the gospel you don't go to preach to the sinner because of their money but when they are born again their money is also converted you don't go to preach to them because they are big men. God want all men to be saved. Am I right? Small men, big men, educated people, rich people, poor people, everybody. But your own is to preach. And when you preach, God will use that preaching to turn everybody around. And I want to tell you that when they are saved, all their properties will be converted to God in Jesus' name. You know, you see a church that doesn't have money to buy land. That's why, let me tell you, you will preach. Look at what Jesus told the disciples. He said, go to the river and you catch a fish. When they wanted to pay tithe. Sorry, tax. They went and caught the fish. Am I right? And when they opened the fish, what did they see? They saw money. There are some fishes in Nigeria, in, in Boni land here, like sinners. When you catch them, the money you need for land is there. The money you need for a good building is there. The money you need for whatever good things in the house of God is there. But how will you get them when you don't go out to fish and catch the fish? So, if you look at this word of God we are reading, it's a promise that God is giving to the church that if we practice it, we will enjoy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me a better amen, dear. Amen. A story was told about, before I read the last place I want to read now, about one of our pastors in church. They sent him there as a missionary. Praise the Lord. And when he got there, there was no building. There was nothing. He came back to meet Jesus. And he said, sir, I don't need any other thing. Just give me some money to erect a structure where we can gather to worship. Because they were worshiping on that tree. Just give me some more money so that I can just erect a structure where we can gather to worship. Jesus told him, that everything you need is in that place. 
I thought you would shout a very good amen there. Now, if a pastor comes to me, say, Vasya, give us money to build our church. I say, everything you need is that place. The person will frown face. Those who don't believe God doesn't know God. Say, everything you need is where? It's in that place. And the overseer requested, say, sir, pray for me. And yes, pray for him. He went back and organized a program, a crusade. And as he organized the crusade, he prayed and prayed. And God answered his prayer. So when the people came, one of the people that attended the crusade was a very big man, unknown to anybody. That man got converted because that man was having a terrible sickness that had lasted for years. He has been to places, go to doctor, hospital, no cure. But through that crusade, God healed him. I thought I would hear very good amen there. Yeah. And so when God healed him, what do you think will become of his property? Because this man has building and houses. And so he decided to give one of his very biggest house to the church. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's the thing. That's what we're reading here. And that is where the church now possess as their property. Give it to the church. So everything we need in this life is available for us. Amen. But let us do what God expects us to do. The miracle will take place. Amen. Let me read this with you before we pray. Isaiah chapter 16. As you will read this one with me prayerfully. Isaiah chapter 16. Are you there? Are you there? As I'm reading now, you'll be nodding your head. Because this thing is coming to pass in your life and your family. Arise! Shine! Okay. Well, are you there? Are you ready to rise and shine? Darkness will vanish. Failure will vanish. Sin will vanish. Limitation will vanish. Arise! Shine! For the light is come. Amen. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Amen. Look at Nigeria. Look at condition of the world. Darkness everywhere. But on your path, light. Amen. The land of Goshen is your portion. Trouble everywhere on your path, peace. Poverty everywhere on your path, prosperity. Lack of progress everywhere on your path, progress. Now, look at the Bible. I told you I may not have time to explain all the things. Look at it. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Are you not seeing it everywhere? Confusion everywhere, trouble everywhere. And gross darkness, the people, but the Lord, your God, shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Amen. Are you hearing me very well? Amen. Say better, amen. amen. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Amen. Lift up thy eyes round about. And see, all they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. Amen. If you have a child that have wandered away, that child is coming back. Amen. If you have a daughter that's wayward and have escaped from the house, that daughter is coming back. Amen. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Your children will be with you. Amen. They will not be wanderers. They will not be vagabonds. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Amen. People you don't know will support you. Amen. People you don't know will render help to you. Let me tell you, it's possible that if your church is where somebody is and the members of the of deeper life are not eyes are not open to see the need to build that church, God can raise somebody to build that church. Amen. It has happened. It will happen again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you there? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. Amen. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor. Have I had mercy on thee? Amen. Therefore, my gates shall be open Amen. continually. They shall not be shut day and night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Amen. Prosperity has come. 
open door has come your blessing will not be restricted in the name of jesus christ and that their kings may be brought look at verse 12 for the nation and kingdom shall, uh, that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted the glory of lebanon shall come unto thee the fair tree the pine uh, pine tree and they burst together to beautify the place of my sanctuary your church building will be beautiful and i will make the place of my feet glorious the sun also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at thy soles of thy feet and they shall call thee the city of the lord the zion of the holy one of israel whereas thou hast been forsaken in the past and hated by people so that no man went through thee i will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many generations thou shalt also suck the milk of the gentiles and shall suck the breast of the kings and thou shalt know that i the lord am thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of jacob for brass i will bring gold Amen. change of position Amen. better things ahead Amen. in the place of brass from now gold and the place of iron i will bring silver and for wood brass and for stones iron i will also make thy offices peace officers peace and thy exactors righteous violence shall no more be had in thy land wasting nor destruction within thy borders but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gaze praise the sun shall be no more thy light the sun shall be no more thy light by day neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee but the lord shall be unto thee everlasting light and thy god thy glory thy sun shall no more go down neither shall thy moon withdraw itself give me your blessing permanent your miracle permanent no limitation this time around no no go and come for the lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy mourning the days of thy weeping the days of thy crying the days of thy sorrow shall be ended amen. i thought i would hear louder amen. amen thy people also shall be righteous amen. your children born again your husband born again your neighbors born again family members born again righteous men and women in the name of jesus christ and they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that i would be glorified a little a little one shall become a thousand you are low now you shall be up you are small now you shall be great you count one now you shall count in millions and a small one a strong nation i the lord will esteem it in his time your time of favor has come your time of grace has come your time of open door has come you know why i take time to read all this so that you'll be able to differentiate when god begins to embarrass you with miracle you will differentiate between what we call unequally yoke and there a miracle that is divine coming from god to you praise the lord coming from god to your family you will receive it you will see it you will enjoy it your favor will be unlimited in the name of jesus christ if you are there for blessing give me a better amen rise up and let us pray now a time to favor you has come rise up and pray all the children pray all the youth pray 
adult men and women, husband and wife, brothers and sisters, leaders and workers, open your mouth and pray. And say, God, this is my portion. I will arise and shine. You must be a, a kind of person that knows your, your God. Don't compromise your faith as a believer. But then, God has a blessing for you. Don't be unequal yoked together with unbelievers, sinners, either in business or in marriage, because you are looking for money. Your own money is coming in a different direction. You don't need to compromise your faith before God will bless you. No! God has already promised to bless you. You don't need to go into a dubious business before God will bless you. No! You don't need to give your daughter to a big man because you are looking for money before God will bless you. No! God has promised to bless you and it will start today. Open your mouth and pray. And say, God, it's my time. 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 It is your time. The great cause and comprehension of unequal yoke. Don't be unequal yoke together with a sinner, unbeliever, as a boy or girl, man or woman, workers or member, brothers or sisters. Be different, be separate. Know your God. Know your stand. Anywhere you find yourself. But then, God has promised to do you good. Irretrievable loss of partnership with the ungodly. We lose a lot. We lose privilege, favor, when we go into wrong partnership with unbelievers. Like Josephat, he narrowly escaped death. And Messiah lost tens of thousands of silver. You will not lose anything because of unequal yoke. Because of your unequal yoke with the sinner in business, in marriage. You will not lose eternal life. You will not go to hell. You will not be destroyed by God. The irreproachable landmass. We saw the life of Daniel, that of Joseph, that of Daniel and his friends. They were in the same environment, but they were distinct, separate. You are working in the office, are you different from others? You are selling in the market, are you different from others? You are student in that school, are you different from others? Or you join them, you are like them. Be separate. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't do what they are doing. Don't say the way they say what they are saying. Don't talk the way they are talking. Don't dress the way they are dressing. Don't behave the way they are behaving. And I told you to be yoked together means putting two animals not of the same sight, not of the same height, not of the same character. A child of God is a child of light. A sinner is in darkness. We know God. The sinners don't know God. We fear God. The sinners don't fear God. Two of us cannot go together. We cannot be joined together. Because our ambitions differ. Your road and their road are not the same. We walk in the narrow road. And they go a broad road. We cannot be joined together. You fear God, they don't fear God. You cannot be yoked together. You are in the light, they are in darkness. You cannot be yoked together. You love prayer and they don't know what's called prayer. You cannot be yoked together. You love God, you love fellowship, peace of God, and they don't know anything about God. They serve Satan. You cannot be yoked together. The irreversible lashness or promise. What a big promise that God has given to us. That all the riches of the Gentiles, all the blessings of the Gentiles, because it's God that owns everything. God said, I will lavish it upon my children. What a thing of joy. You don't do, do your business to make money, but God will give you money. God will bless you. God will favor you. If you serve him, you love him. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. On your behalf, 
God will arise. Amen. In your family, God will arise. Amen. In your situation, God will arise. Amen. And every enemy of the past, I see them bow before you. Amen. You have been committing sin. God is saying, time has come for you to abandon that sin and come out. Amen. You have been a backslider. God is saying, time has come for you to renounce backsliding and get restored. You are a believer, not too serious, not committed, not serious minded, not zealous. God is saying, stop that laziness and that careless kind of life. Come out, I will restore you. Are you there? You would say you are poor. And God is saying, I've made you rich. I've made you rich. I've made you rich. I've made you rich. My brother, from today, expect help. Expect miracle. Expect favor. Let's start this way. The first thing now is to open the door. And the key to open all this door for blessings is salvation. Because if one is not born again, you close door against your favor. You close door against your miracle. So if you are here this morning, children, youth, or anybody, and you know your life is not straight, and that the promise of God we say here is not meant for you. What you need now is to raise up your hand and say, God, take my life. Just do that now. All eyes closed. God bless you. Raise up your hand. You want to give your life to Christ. Raise up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Don't look at other people. Just do that. It's personal. Raise up your hand. You want to surrender to Christ. You want to be born again. You want to know God. The Lord will save you. The Lord will change your condition. I want to pray for those people now. Raise up your hand very well. Above your head. Above your head. You say this prayer after me. My father. I thank you. I know you love me. I'm a sinner. I've come to you. And I repent of my sins. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my sins. I promise. That from today. I will not go back to them. I promise to follow you all the rest of my life in Jesus name my father my God I thank you for these ones whose hands are up they have seen the need to totally turn away from sin for them to surrender to you the Savior of their soul Lord I pray that their confession today will be accepted by you in Jesus name you forgive them all their sins of the past. Save them. Bring their names in the book of life. Take their names away from the book of death and destruction. Our Father, give them the grace to go and sin no more. Give them the power to say no to sin. I thank you, Lord, because you have answered me. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Give me a better amen. amen. Rise up, everybody, and raise up your hand. You will shine. Amen. I said you will shine. Amen. God has promised to favor you. And it will start this week. Amen. I said it will start this week. Amen. All those promises we have read is coming your way. Amen. I said they are coming your way. Amen. In your business, you will see them. Amen. In your neighborhood, you will see them. Amen. As you travel, you will see them. God will send helps. Amen. God will send favor. Amen. God will send open door. Amen. God will give you breakthroughs. Amen. God will make you what you ought to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From today, even those who are against you, they shall become your friend. Amen. Your enemies will bow before you. Amen. They will submit themselves to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The sinner will look for our God. Amen. The sinner will look for our God. God will give us the wealth and the riches of the Gentiles in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Raise up your hand. Father, I want to thank you this moment. You've spoken to our hearts. Lord, you told us that we are supposed to be different from others. We are not like sinners. We are not like backsliders. We are not like those who do not know you. Those who do not fear you. And we are not supposed to team up with them for anything. Lord, we are asking from today those who are into one unequal yoke together with sinners in any form father bring them out in the name of jesus christ forgive them in the name of jesus christ 
Lord, whatever been the losses in the past, Lord, let there be a restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever we have lost as a result of going against God, committing sin, doing evil, Father, let those things be regained now in Jesus' name. Father, for your children that are here today, Father, you have promised us blessing. And I pray, God, that from today they will arise, they will shine, for their blessing has come. Their light has come. In their place of work, they will shine. In their school, they will shine. In the market, they will shine. In their neighborhood, they will shine. In the church, they will shine. Anywhere they find themselves, shining members in the name of Jesus Christ. Our children will shine. Our husband will shine. Our wife will shine. All our youth will shine. And the favor will come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, from this day, all the hardship, take it away. Make the riches of the Gentiles our own. Let the favor of God come. This bunny will be blessed because of us. And all the blessing of God in bunny year, all your children will be a partaker. A beneficiary of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, everything you are doing in this world is for the sake of your children. The Bible tells me the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Now I pray any power anywhere that is standing against the blessing of your children the progress of your people the favor of your children let those things be removed now in the name of jesus christ any power that is saying your children cannot get to the top they cannot achieve what they are looking for and someone is depriving them say i cannot give him job they cannot have job they cannot have promotion we cannot elevate them we cannot bring them out who owns that man you are the creator of that man father for the sake of your sons and daughters this day let there be wonders in their place of work in the name of jesus lord i pray that from this day every member of this church in this group all over the region all over the state all over nigeria we shall begin to reap the profit of this preaching in the name of jesus Christ. from today the benefit of this preaching shall be seen as we go back to market tomorrow as we go back to work tomorrow we shall begin to reap the harvest of this message in the name of jesus christ from every quarter send helpers from every corner send helpers all over us send helpers within and without send helpers we shall not suffer we shall not be defeated we shall not be limited in the name of jesus christ let every closed doors be open in the name of jesus christ the door of favor be open the door of healing be open the door of grace be open the door of revival be open the door of growth be open the door of prosperity be open so do it lord in the name of jesus christ thank you lord for honoring our prayers this week will be one of the best week we have ever lived because left and right front and back surrounded by blessings favor every step we take surely goodness mercies shall follow us everything we touch surely goodness and mercy shall follow us everything we eat surely goodness and mercy shall follow us it is done for our children it is done for our youth it is done for our sisters and brothers it is done for our leaders and workers it is done for our pastors it is done thank you lord because we have answered in jesus name we are prayed god bless you Praise the Lord. We want to sincerely appreciate God. It looks as if we, are not, we will not be able to have the combined service. But altogether, God by His mercy and by His grace, He has made it possible in Jesus' name. Though when you look around, you discover that some of our members are not here. I want you to look at your left, your right, front and back. Meaning that today, even when we are going out for the publicity, after the Sunday service, we will still launch out to go and visit them. Praise the Lord. All those we have invited, they are not here, we will still go to them. 
and those that are supposed to be here, they are not here, we will still reach out to them. The adults, the youths, and as well, the children. Praise the Lord. As we told us earlier, for all those workers, pastors, key leaders, near workers, that are supposed to be at the national